and hibernation, a period where native ant species fall into a deep sleep, also named stasis, to conserve energy, survive the winter and prepare themselves for another upcoming ant season, what we call spring. In this video, we will hydrate our ant colonies and check out how they fare in this cold time of year. Did our pet ant colonies manage to survive? Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Ants Vienna Ant Channel. If you are watching us for the first time, on this channel we cover everything you need to know when keeping ants as pets. And today we shall open Pandora's box, which happens to be this storage box containing all the ant colonies I keep in dedicated ant farms that need regular hydration even in the winter. Now, before we start, we'll need some basic equipment that every aspiring ant keeper should have in his or her arsenal. A glass of fresh distilled water, a syringe with a needle, preferably a flat one so we don't accidentally pierce ourselves, and a pair of tweezers to pick up any debris that the ants may have stockpiled in the meantime. While the temperature of 2.7 degrees Celsius or 37 degrees Fahrenheit helps keep me fresh, if you like what I'm doing, a thumbs up would certainly warm me up and help this video reach even more ant keeping enthusiasts. Back to the facts now. Here in Austria, it certainly gets cold in winter and native ant species in the wild take a deep sleep underground at temperatures ranging between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius. So during this period, I keep my pet ants in the basement currently at 10.7 degrees Celsius. Now let's have a look at our colonies, shall we? First up are Formica fusca ants. This colony unfortunately lost its queen during last hibernation. I still hope to find a Formica fusca queen during the upcoming nuptial flights 2022 and try out queen adoption. Maybe a parasitic type of queen ant like Sanguinea would do the trick as well. Now question to all you watching, have you ever tried integrating a queen ant into an existing ant colony? Let me know down in the comments. I appreciate any tip you may have for me. If you happen to be an ant keeping beginner and are looking to keep something bigger than Lazius Niger but still fairly easy to keep, I can wholeheartedly recommend you Formica Fusca. Speaking of Lazius, you may recognize this Formicarium from my DIY ant farm build tutorial. It currently houses our Lazius emarginatus colony. Since these ants like to nest in stone, Utong has been a great choice as their home. Due to the cold here, all colony members are on top of each other forming a black mass. Let me see if I can get you guys closer. Okay, seems like this is the closest I can get since the glass is so foggy due to the temperature difference from inside to outside where I am filming. For now, You'll have to take my word for it, the queen is alive and well protected from the workers covering her up. In this DIY formicarium, I have three options to water my ants. First, I can hydrate the utong stone directly, like so. Second, I can fill up the feeding dish that lets the ants drink and third option, I can fill up the built-in water tower to raise the ambient humidity level within the nesting area. To our big girls now, our Campanotus vagus colony in the wooden ant nest. Let me show you this. Do you see the worker lying around here? Contrary to what you may believe, 
she might not be dead, but rather frozen. When the temperature rises, she will slowly get up and start wandering around again. Let's check the outworld now. You see me watering everything to keep the setup humid. Unlike the other worker inside the nest, this one seems dead to me. You can differentiate that from the position that she's lying in. Usually, when ants curl their legs inside this way, it's a bad sign. Our first hibernation casualty this year. Anyway, our work in this ant farm is done. So, I'll put the cover on again and place the setup back in my box. Next up, my favorite ant species so far. Formica cunicularia. Talk about foggy glass here. Let me get this cover off first. And... Another black mass. Even in person, I can't tell what's going on inside there. But there are definitely many ants. Let's water them properly. Okay, two more ant colonies to go, guys! I hope you enjoy this type of casual video that shows you more of the everyday life of an ant keeper. If so, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe for more. Now comes a setup that I've recently created in our build tutorial. The sand ant farm, housing our Lazius Niger colony. Look at those tunnels and chambers! Lazius Niger truly thrive in sand and dirt setups. If you haven't tried them, I highly suggest doing so. All ants pack together here too. As you can see, this is a common phenomenon for all colony members to get over the queen and protect her during this cold time of year. Now, this setup clearly holds humidity well, but I'll water them a bit just in case. Lazius Niger generally are keen to humid environments, so it can't be too humid for them, right? And last but not least, another homemade ant farm. This is the home of our Campanotus ligniperdus ant colony which is unfortunately not doing great. I can count the queen and only two workers alive. On the positive side, however, you can see this worker is holding some eggs and larva. So, hope is not lost quite yet for the biggest European ant species. I would love to see this colony thrive, since majors of this species often reach 16 mm and my particular queen ant comes in at almost 20 mm. That's more than three quarters of an inch. Let us hope for the best while we pack them too into the box with the others. Now, those of you watching with sharp eyes may have noticed the thermometer reading in the upper left corner has dropped even more to just 0.8 degrees Celsius, equivalent to 33 Fahrenheit. Way too cold for my personal taste. So, here is my question of the day for you. Do you prefer native ants that are prone to hibernation or do you rather keep exotic ants that don't need hibernation? And what factors led to your decision? I am really curious what ants you guys and girls prefer keeping, so let me know down in the comments. And meanwhile, if you want to learn more about ant keeping, check out the videos that appear on your screen right now.